Uh, Coach Davis, just a quick opening comment about uh, Jackson and Rob, adding them to the roster, and then we'll take questions. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about the uh, addition of Jackson and Rob. Uh, they had played uh, previously two years ago for Coach Brad Frederick on the JV team, and um, they're great players and great kids, and um, their ability to help us in practice and for us to prepare has been absolutely outstanding the last couple of weeks, and so I'm I can't tell you how excited I am for them to be on the team, and uh, they're great to be around every day. Okay, questions, Greg. Uh, Andrew Jones, go ahead. Coach, you're less than a week away from your opener. Um, yeah. What are the things that you like that you've seen from your team uh, over the last month or so since you guys have gear been gearing toward this? No, I, you know I really like their um, I like their attention to detail and I like their hunger. You know, one of the things that I've said to a number of people is that they're, they're playing with a sense of desperation. And uh, one of the things that, that they're desperate about is that they want to be relevant. You know, so many times it, it's really nice to have a staff that, that, that is, you know, guys that have played here, that have been here, that have had experiences here. And so, you know, we've told stories, uh, myself, uh, Coach May, Coach Frederick, Coach Lebo, Coach Sullivan, about the experiences that we've had here at Carolina. And in a good way, I think they're tired of hearing our stories, our testimonies, our memories. They want to create their own memories and their stories and their testimonies of playing and winning and making big shots and big games and winning championships. And I really believe that that's the driving force in them over the last couple months since we've started practice. And it's, it's, it's fun to watch and it's fun to coach. Steve, do we got a second question? Yeah, go yeah. ahead. Okay, okay. Uh, I know coaches are never comfortable, but given the state I'm comfortable. Where you are, I'm comfortable right now. I'm completely well, okay, comfortable. Then, <laughs> how, okay, then how comfortable are you with with the guys adapting, not just the new players coming in and meshing in, but also the returning guys adapting to some of the changes that you've made? Yeah, you know, one of the things that I've I, I've told them that the foundation of Carolina basketball is going to be the same. I said, but there are going to be some tweaks, some pivots, some changes. And they've done really well with that. And um, I've been very happy with the returning players at, at adjusting to the tweaks, the pivots, the changes, as well as the newcomers and, and the freshmen and the transfers. And everybody's on the same page. And so from that standpoint, I feel very comfortable with them being able to adapt to uh, my personality and my style of coaching. One thing before we get to the next question, um, in the future, we've got 35 people on the call. If you all dial in at 158, it's hard to get everybody, you know, allowed to record. So if you can kind of get on a little bit earlier, that would help make sure you all can record. Uh, go ahead, Greg Barnes. Hey, Hubert. Uh, hey, Roy, hey, Greg. Williams, uh, Roy Williams was uh, known for using a man-to-man -man defense primarily. Dean, of course, used a little bit of uh, multiple defenses. What is your defensive approach? Um, mainly it, it, it's man. You know, I, I'm, I'm a man-to-man -man defensive coach and I believe in it, but I also believe in changing defenses. You know, one of the things that I always say is I don't want the offense to, to get a steady diet of what they're looking at uh, from an offensive standpoint. In order to do that defensively, you're going to have to make changes. And so I like to change. I like to play zone. I like to, I like to trap. I like to three quarter court, soft trap, press. Uh, I like to try many different things and different looks so that uh, from an offensive standpoint, whoever we play, uh, they don't feel comfortable out there. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Noah Monroe. Hey, Coach. Noah Monroe from the Daily Tar Heel. Uh, kind of going back to that adjusting uh, point, you have a transfer in Brady Manick. He's from Oklahoma. He played at Oklahoma. All his family played college ball in Oklahoma. <laughs> now, how do you think Brady has adjusted to being halfway across the country? And have you been seeing him be homesick at all? He hasn't because uh, every week uh, a part of his family is here in Chapel Hill. And so he's he's brought Oklahoma here to Chapel Hill. And uh, I, I've said this to a number of people. I, I am I am upset that I'm only going to be able to coach Brady Manick for one year. Uh, he's been absolutely fantastic, uh, not just on the court, but just um, his personality, his demeanor, his experience. Um, I don't know where this team would be without Brady on this team. And um, I love coaching him. I love being around him. And I love his family. 
And uh, he has been a huge piece of uh, this team and is going to be uh, an unbelievable player for us this year. Brandon Mark. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. And kind of going back to Brady, he's certainly a stretch big. He can play both the four and the five. How do you see Brady's role as being this season since he's just so diverse in what he can do? Yeah, you know, I, I love his versatility. I mean, you want to talk about on the offensive end, he has the ability to shoot the basketball. And I really believe this. I think he's the best shooting big in the country. It's not even close. His ability to shoot the basketball off of ball screens, down screens, uh, um, any type of screens, flare screens is, is very valuable to us. And, and one of the things that I've said in the past is that I like versatile bigs. I want bigs that have the ability to score in a post, but also can make plays on the perimeter. He's very crafty. He can score down low on a block with either hand. And one of the things that I've learned uh, about him is he's an unbelievable passer. And so um, his versatility on the offensive end is, is, is a huge piece in us of being the best offensive team that we can be. But he's also a great defensive player. I feel very comfortable with him switching all ball screens and having him guard guards out there on the perimeter. He is an unbelievable, fantastic basketball player. Brandon Marks, then Aaron Beard. Hey, Hubert, good afternoon. Hey. Uh, just because just it's a week before the season opener, I know Puff had been dealing with some injury stuff. Just sort of what's his status as far as rehab and generally sort of uh, how healthy are you guys going into the opener? Well, we're uh, really healthy, and you, you mentioned about Puff, and Puff has had a couple of injuries, you know, the last month and a half. Right now he's dealing with, a, like, a hip strain, and, you know, and one of those injuries, much like the hamstring, you can't rush back. You can't fight through. It's just you need rest, you need time, and uh, you need rehab, and that's where, that's where Puff is right now. And uh, one of the things that I did say to Puff last week is I was so proud of him because, you know, it's very hard to – when things aren't going your way in terms of injuries, to uh, not be positive and not celebrate the success of others. And the person that does it the best is is Puff. He's been great at practice. His energy, his enthusiasm um, has really helped the team uh, during practice. And I've been really proud of him. And I'm looking forward to when he's 100%. He's allowed to, to start practicing full and uh, get out there on the floor. Okay, gotcha. So would you anticipate him being available for the opener then or probably a little bit away from that still? I, I don't know. Um, okay. um, I, I would like that, but I don't know. Um, the, the thing that's on my mind is I want him to be 100% healthy. So that's the only thing on my mind in regards to Puff. Thank you. Aaron Beard, then Steel Brown. <laughs> hey, Hubert. Hey, Aaron. Uh, when uh, when you bring in transfers, you're getting experienced guys, but obviously they're new to what you want to do here at North Carolina. Of course, I guess everybody is to a degree. <laughs> but how but how have you used used that experience of Brady and Justin and Dawson to kind of you know help you kind of put the foundation of what you want to do together for preseason? Well, you know the you know the good part about you know Brady, Dawson, and Justin is you know they they've played big time college basketball before. So they understand, you know, the preparation that goes into it. They understand how hard you have to practice and they understand how hard you have to play just to put yourself in a position to possibly be successful. You know, they have all been successful at, at, at their previous schools and coming here, it, it's just, it's been a really easy transition uh, for me to coach. Um, I had known uh, Dawson since high school. So there was a relationship there Justin, uh, you know, he went to Panther Creek right here in this area and actually played against my oldest son. So I had known Justin for years as well. So that there, there have been previous relationships. But the transition, you know, one of the things that I talked about is, you know, the transfer portal. If I can every year, if we need transfers, and if I could get a Brady Manick and a Dawson Garcia and a Justin McCoy, you can sign me up every year. I mean, they, 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 they have been unbelievable for me, and I'm so glad that they're a Tar Heel, and I'm so glad that they're on our team. C.L. Brown, then Michael Coe. How you doing, Hubert? Good, um, good. I was curious, <clears throat> from, the, from the secret scrimmage you guys had until now, did you kind of identify some areas in that game um, that, that you want to see for this, for this uh, exhibition you – uh, want to see cleaned up 
actually, could you identify those areas to us? <laughs> well, you know, one one of the areas that, you know, we, we want to continue to get better at is taking care of the basketball. That's that's something that we struggled with last year. I think we were last, you know, in terms of, you know, we committed more turnovers than anybody in the ACC. And so one of the things that has, has been a huge emphasis for us all year is, you know, making easy play and taking care of the basketball. Um, I actually thought we did a really good job of that against uh, Florida in the secret scrimmage. And so that's something that's always been a theme for us to um, to continue to get better at is taking care of the basketball and making sure that we're getting shots. Uh, I was very encouraged with our effort on the offensive glass. That's something that will never change. You know, we've always been great at getting second chance opportunities, and that's something that we were able to get um, – uh, in that scrimmage against Florida, and, and I really liked our pace, the way that we uh, pushed the ball either on a made or missed basket. I think, you know, in that scrimmage, one of the things that was really good for me as a coach to see is is how tough and resilient this team is. You know, Florida was, they're very athletic, they're very aggressive, especially on the defensive end, and, you know, for the first couple minutes, they kind of punched us, and uh, I really felt great about how we responded to that, and, um I was really excited about, and I, I was very encouraged at the end of that scrimmage. And could you give us some insight into uh, your philosophy on the starting lineup? Like, yeah, you know, we see against. Would you prefer to have five guys that just kind of are the core, and that you ride that out, or is it something you might tinker with? You know, depending on matchups, depending on practice leading up, that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, I think it. You know, at this point, it could be a fluid situation. You know, depending on pra practice, depending on on matchups. Um, in terms of the starting lineup, yes, I am thinking about it. It's not set right now. I, I feel like I'm close. But the thing that I've been focusing on more is is, is the rotation, um, not necessarily the starting lineup. And um, we've got a lot of talented guys, and there's a lot of guys that want to play. And, and the competition at practice has, has been right where I've wanted it to be. Michael Coe, then Austin Bean. Hey, Coach. So it's been almost exactly seven months since you were hired as head coach. Looking back on your time in the position from April until today, what's something that's surprised you about the role, either been easier or harder than you thought it would be? No, I mean, nothing has, has surprised me. You know, a, a question that I get all the time is, you know, what has been the challenges of being a head coach? And I tell them that, that – Nothing has surprised me, and there there hasn't been any challenges, you know. And one of the things that I always tell them that is, you know, I've always loved basketball, and getting an opportunity to be around the game and to coach it—that's a dream come true. And then to be able to do it at a place that I've loved my entire life um, has just been terrific. And so having a chance, a front row seat, to be able to help these kids out and to reach all their personal and their team goals is a privilege and it's an honor. And it's something that I look forward to every day. Uh, I'll be honest with you, uh, it was two days ago, I think, uh, Eric Hoots, uh, one of, uh, on our staff, came to us, uh, came directly to me right after practice, and he says, he said, you're having fun, aren't you? And I said, Eric, I am. I said, I'm having a ball. I said, I just love being around these kids on and off the court. It's a joy to be able to coach them and to hug them and to teach them and try to get the best out of them. And that's what I am. I'm, 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 I'm having the time of my life. So the, for the first time ever, the Zoom's telling me it's going to kick me out at 2.20. So uh, keep these questions quick, please. Austin Dean, then Luke DeCock. Hey, Coach Davis. Austin hey. Dean with um, Daily Tar Hill. Yep. I know you um, touched on your relationship with Dawson Garcia a little bit, but I was just kind of wondering, you know, just apart from his basketball skill, kind of what you saw – from him just from a personal side and just, you know, kind of as a leader and a teammate on the court. Can you repeat that question again? I'm, I apologize. Yeah, no problem. Um, so, just kind of apart from um, Dalston, you know, just how good of a basketball player he is. I was just kind of wondering what you, you know, kind of identified from him early on on a personal level, you know, just kind of, you know, as a leader and a teammate on the court. Well, you know, his experience, of, you know, last year playing at Marquette and, um, has been really great for us. You know, he's he's a guy that can dominate a game on both ends of the floor. You know, one of the things that I think people are going to be able to see, not I think, I know, is that uh, he's an outstanding, unbelievable um, defensive player. I mean, he's a guy that I feel completely comfortable with playing 
any position defensively. And then on the offensive end, his ability to score close to the basket on the perimeter is, is, is something that's valuable to us. But it's also, you know, his, his attention to detail and his, and his want to. You know, one of the things with, you know, with Dawson is I never have to coach effort with him. He's in the gym. He's the first guy in the gym. He's one of the last guys to leave it. He comes in at the middle of the night. He's, treat, he's treating this season as a professional, and uh, he's going to have a terrific year, and um, he's going to have a long, unbelievable um, NBA career as well. Luke DeCock. All right. Uh, I'll go quick. The, you talked about tweaks and pivots, um, things <laughs> you want to change without getting away from the foundation of Carolina basketball. When we see your team take the court, will it look different to sort of bystanders or will it look like UNC basketball or, or how much you have to know about it to, to sort of perceive what's changed? It'll, it'll, it'll look like UNC basketball. And as I said before, the foundation has been set. It's been here for a number of years and it's something that it's been tried and tested and proven successful. And as long as I'm here, that's not going to change. Um, the tweaks and pivots that we're that we're trying that we're adjusting to is is things that are consistent with the foundation of what Carolina basketball is all about. You know, one of the things that I've always said is I want former players, whether they're at practice, they're watching a game, they're reading a newspaper, whatever it is, I want them to be able to, to identify with this place, and I want them to see this place and go, that's the Carolina that I experienced that's the Carolina that I went to. And so when they see us play, whether it's Friday or Tuesday or next Friday, um, they'll be able to identify with that. Greg Hall. Sorry, Hubert, Gregory Hall with Inside Carolina here. Um, who are the leaders on this team? Who has emerged um, kind of vocally on the court? Everybody. I've, 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 I've encouraged everybody to be leaders. Um, I've encouraged everybody um, to set the standard of, of how we want to how we want to prepare, how we want to practice, and how we want to prepare every day. You know, I've, I've, I've encouraged everybody to have a voice. You know, we're at some point we're going to announce captains, but uh, one of the things that I'm going to uh, tell the team is just because that we've announced specific captains, everybody on the team is a captain. And um, so that's the way that I've approached it. I, I encourage everybody on the team to be leaders in order for us to reach all of our team and individual goals. Caitlin Smith from the DTH. Hey, Coach. Uh, could you just talk a little bit about Kerwin Walton's potential for the season, his three-point percentage, and his defense? Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I've really pushed Kerwin um, in practice this year because I really feel like that he, he can take – you know, he has so much potential and he can take another step in his development and being a great player. You know, one of the things that he always talks about is Kobe. And that's his, that was his favorite player and um, always talks about the mindset that Kobe Bryant had. And that's something that he wants to adopt to, his, to himself. And one of the things that I've been challenging him on is that uh, one of the things that, that Kobe Bryant was great at is he was not only – um, terrific on the on the offensive end. He was an outstanding defensive player as well, and I really believe Kerwin can do that. He's much more than a three point shooter. You know, he's 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 a fantastic uh, passer. He can put the ball on the floor. He can make plays. But the area where I feel like that he can improve the most is on the defensive end, and he's able to do that. I think he can be a, a you know a, a defensive stopper out there. And he's really bought in this year to becoming better defensively. And I've been proud of his um, improvement on the defensive end. And um, I, I love his attention to detail and, and how much and how hard he's working on that end. Davis Wallace. Hey, Coach Davis. How can the fans help the team this season? Uh, be in the stands before 7 o'clock, cheering all the time. <laughs> 22,000 every home game, supporting all of our student athletes. You know, one of the things that I always say is, yes, they're 6'10", they're 6'11", they can jump out of the gym and they can run like a deer, but um, they're just kids and they need support. And so, you know, just for late night, you know, coming out and, and seeing fans out there, I, I can't tell you how many times that the players have come back and said, you know, that was a big deal, just having people in the stands and supporting them. 
And so they're really excited about the exhibition game on Friday and playing our first two games at home and, and having that support and having, um, having people in the stands is something that they look forward to and something that they need in order to, for them to be the best that they can be. Isaiah Lucas. Hey, Coach. Isaiah Lucas from Inside Carolina. Just wanted to know what you're expecting out of Friday night's exhibition game. I want to play well. I want to play well. I want us to continue to improve. I always feel like, and I and I tell them that you know, once we step on the floor, um, the number one thing that we want to do is we want to get a little bit better. And so uh, for us as a team, um, I want us to get better on both ends of the floor. It's, it's, it's our development in terms of becoming the team that we want to become in order to put ourselves in the chance to achieve all of our team goals, which are win the regular season ACC title, the ACC tournament title, get to a Final Four, and win a national championship. And so um, – you know, one of the things that we always talk about is the process. Just focus on the practice and the process, and the end result will take care of itself. And so Friday's exhibition game is part of the practice, is part of the process of getting us to where we need to be. All right, that was the last question, Coach Davis. Thank you. Everybody appreciates you jumping on, and we will see hopefully many of you Friday night. Thank you. Okay, thank you.